Many service technicians prefer to remove the engine and powertrain rather than lowering the rear of the engine a few inches. In either case, a heavy-duty hydraulic jack such as J8394 and adapter J7894 are necessary. Remove all components which would interfere with service work and necessary sheet metal shrouding around the engine. Remove rocker covers, exhaust manifolds, and rocker arms. Remove push rods, rocker arm studs, push rod guides, and discard O-ring seals. Loosen aluminum push rod drain tubes. Then, with heads pulled part way off the studs, discard inner O-ring seals and remove drain tubes. Discard outer seals and remove heads. Discard copper head gaskets. Then remove valves using a spring compressor such as J8062. Remove valve spring shims. Clean guide bores with tool J8101. Clean combustion chambers and valve ports using wire brush J8358. Now make a set of 12 cylinder holding tubes from one half inch OD stock. Cut six tubes to four and one quarter inches, the other six to three and one half. Install and clean piston heads. Wire brush clean all valves. Carefully examine valves, valve guides, and bores. Inspect for fractures, especially near valve seats. Valve guides are available for all Corvair engines except turbocharged models. Standard replacement guides are two thousandths oversize, with ten and twenty thousandths oversizes available. These guides use standard diameter valve stems. To remove a damaged J21 tube, use remover and a heavy guide. hammer to drive it out from the spring side. If the guide bore is free of internal damage, install the standard guide without reaming. If there is deep gouging, select the 10 thousandths oversized reamer J21282. Use cutting oil and ream from the combustion chamber side. If this operation does not clean up guide bore, re-ream with the 20 thousandths oversized reamer, J21283. Drive the selected guide into the bore from the combustion chamber side, small diameter end first. Use installer J21281. The installed height is correct when the tool groove aligns with the top surface of the valve seat. Use the standard size reamer from the combustion chamber side to remove slight guide bore distortion or peening. If valve guides do not need replacement, you should check valve stem to guide clearance. Hold the valve off the seat about one quarter inch and locate the dial indicator button against the stem just above the guide. Move stem crosswise to the head. If clearances are excessive, select one of the reamers J5830-1, dash dash four or dash five, which are three, 10 or 20 thousandths oversize. Ream from combustion chamber side. Select corresponding oversize valve. All intake valves have the single groove lock. However, when the original exhaust valves need replacement, you should use the four bead lock design on all except the Corvair 95 engines. Corvair 95 engines for 1963 and 64 are equipped with single lock design stellite exhaust valves and rotators, which are now available for installation in earlier Corvair 95 vehicles. Now let's look at recommended grinding angles. Intake valves are refaced either 44 or 45 degrees, depending on the engine and model year. Check valve springs with a spring tester, such as J8056, and an accurate torque wrench. Correct specifications are shown. Replace weak springs. Install only the valve, spring shim, spring cap, and valve keys. Pull valve tight against the seat. Measure between spring shim and spring cap. Never add shims that will bring the installed height of the spring below specifications. Assemble all valves. Position new head gaskets in the combustion chambers and install cylinder heads. Insert drain tubes with new O-ring seals and at each rocker stud recess. Oil seals, then tap drain tubes into position. Insert rocker studs through push rod guides from the stamped U side and onto head studs. Install cylinder head nuts and torque 32 to 38 foot-pounds as shown. Insert push rods with side oil hole to rocker arm. 
loosely install all rocker arms. Set pulley timing mark at zero on timing pad with distributor rotor at number one cylinder in the distributor cap. Lash only the valve shown. Now turn engine to set distributor rotor at the number two cylinder with the pulley notch aligned to zero mark on timing pad. Lash remaining valves as shown. Valve lash is adjusted by first turning rocker arm adjusting nut slowly until there is no rocking chair motion of the rocker arm. Then turn nut clockwise exactly three quarters of a turn more on 1960 and 1961 turbo air engines and one and one quarter turn more on super turbo air engines. Lash all 1962, 63 and 64s, one complete turn more. Check for distortion of rocker cover. Straighten if necessary, then install with a new gasket. Install oil cooler with new seals and exhaust manifolds with new packings. Torque to limits shown. When the engine is reinstalled, it may be necessary to readjust valve lash with the engine running. Follow procedures in the 1964 shop manual, page 6A-5 and 6. This completes Corvair valve servicing. She really feels looking real tough with chrome reverse wheels. Blue coral wax job sure looks pretty. Gonna get my chicken make it out to Drag City. We'll go to Drag City. What?